Hi, I'm Ethan, and this is going to be the seventh part of my 10 parts Unity tutorial series. So in the last video, I covered how to make a movement system for a boulder. So just to, just to show that out, uh, I'm going to hold down D to speed us up. We're going to run into these crates. I'm going to press W to jump. We're going to go way high into the air. I'm going to hold A to roll around to the left. And look at that. So our movement system works. So now the first thing I want to do is I want to really quickly polish up our debris system. So this is looking fine, but it could be a little bit better. It was kind of bothering me last time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the shape of it. So the shape of our cone, no, sorry, the shape of our particle system is going to determine the range and the, the angle at which the particles are going to be dispersed. So Right now it's in cone, which means it's going to spawn along this sort of flat line, and then it's going to go up, and then due to gravity it's going to fall down. So that's fine, but I would rather it be a sphere. So a sphere means that the particles are going to be spread all around it. So if we look at this, man, that's looking much better. And I'm also going to slightly decrease the size of these particles. So I'm going to change it from 0 0.6, and then change that to 1.2. And then finally, I'm going to just just decrease the number of particles. So down to from 30 down to 15. Yeah, so that's looking much more reasonable. Now I'm going to override it as usual. So when you are editing a prefab in the scene and you want to change and you want to apply those changes to everything else, just click override to the top and then click apply all. So I'm going to safely I'm going to be able to safely delete this because I know that all of the changes have been made now. So now what I want to do is I want something for us to interact with, something for us to bump into you, and then something cool is gonna happen. So for that I'm gonna think I think that the best choice is for us to make a bomb. Just something that when you run into it it's gonna push you and everything around it. So to start with I've already made my own bomb sprite. I made this in Google Slides now, right now, it's in sprite lit default. I can change this to sprite unlit default, and it's going to look fine. Well, it would look fine if it not for the fact that it was gigantic. So let's change the scale down to 0 0.1. You know, maybe it's a bit small. Let's change it to 0 0.2. So now we have this bomb, and as usual, nothing's going to happen to it, and it's not going to do anything as long as we don't have any components on it. So let's add some physics components. Rigid body 2D. Uh, let's see here, circle collider. And then something new. It's going to be called point effector 2D. So for the most part, these are the three. Well, no, we're, I'm going to add another circle collider. And I'll tell you why later. So these are the four components that I'm going to be using Rigid body 2D, two circle colliders and then one point effector 2D. Now to start with, you'll notice that the circle collider, the green barrier, is not quite on the bomb, and we can we can help fix this. So on one of the circle colliders, I'm going to decrease the radius so that it more matches uh, the size of a bomb, the visual size of a bomb. And I'm going to change the offset so that it's more on the bomb. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm going to increase a little bit. And yeah, that's fine. So now this is going to be the circle. This is this collider. This inner collider is going to be the collider that's actually physically colliding with things. And then there's going to be another collider, which is going to be the second collider, which is actually going to be the explosion radius of our bomb. So to make it actually work as our explosion radius, I'm going to check these two boxes. Is trigger is going to make sure that this collider isn't actually causing anything to get blocked by it and used by effector is going to enable this other collider, this bigger collider to be used by our point effector and what a point effector does is it's basically a sort of force push anything that's within the... anything that is within this circle collider, this... this point effector's collider is going to be affected by a push so it's basically going to be like a force push, like from Star Wars. So 
just to cover it really quickly, force magnitude is basically the amount of force that's being pushed on everything. If it's on negative, it's going to suck everything in. If it's positive, which I want, it's going to push things away. Variation is going to be uh, a random amount that it's going to increase by. So for this, I'm just going to put the 50. Distance scale is basically how much the force drops off per... At, at, uh, <clears throat> distance scale is how much the force drops off per distance. So if it's at 2, then it's going to drop off more. If it's lower than 1, it's actually going to increase even more. So it's going to be more force. <clears throat> force source is basically where the force is going to be applied. If it's on rigid body, it's going to be the center of mass. If it's on collider, it's going to be on a particular point on the collider as opposed to just the center of mass. <clears throat> Same thing for the target. So source is going to be where it's going to start from. Target is where it's actually going to be hit. And then on force mode, it's uh, if it's constant, then there's going to be no uh, energy drop off. There's going to be an evenly amount of an even amount of force applied to every object, no matter the distance from the collider. <clears throat> Now, for a realistic explosion, let's change this to inverse linear. Cool. So now we want to uh, increase the size of our circle collider, our outer circle collider, which is going to be our explosion radius. So let's change this to 12 for a good measure. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> now, we, we want our bomb to actually function. So let's add a script. New script. Name it bomb. Create and add. It's going to create a new bomb, right? With a new script right here. Double click it to enter Visual Studio. <clears throat> and now we're going to want to really start working. So, here, let's just make some variables real quick. Point effector 2D, uh, explosion component. So, this is just declaring that this, this variable is going to store our point effector 2D. Uh, component, you know, explosion component equals to get component point effector 2D. Cool. And then now what we want is we also want a reference to our circle collider. So circle collider 2D, circle collider. And then we also want to serialize some fields. Let's see, serialize field private. Target float add torque amount in degrees. Cool. So that's a lot of things that just happened. This is going to store a circle collider component. This is going to store. This is going to be a field in the inspector that we can edit. This is basically going to give everything in the explosion radius a spin. So we don't want everything to just have absolutely no spin. You can imagine a car being flung away, but it's still completely upright, like the wheels are still pointing towards the ground. So that would look really weird and unnat un unnatural. So let's see here. So we just want to assign all of our components. Circle Collider is get components, Circle Collider 2D. So this, all of this is just so we can reference our component. And then at, the f at first we want our explosion component to be false because we don't want our bomb to go off immediately. So I'll comment that just for clarity. And then explosion radius is just going to be... Did I make that a variable yet? No. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Private float explosion radius is just going to be our circle fly is going to be equal to our circle collider dot radius. And let's serialize this field so we can specify which circle collider we want. Cool. So now we want our bomb to detonate whenever it hits our boulder. So let's do that. I'm going to control S to save. Let's see, avoid on collision enter 2D. So again, this is going to be a method that checks, that runs every time our bomb hits something, or something hits it. So we wanted to check if our, if what it just hit 
has a tag of odor, then we want it to detonate the bomb. And the way we want it to detonate the bomb is, first off, we want to enable our explosion component. So this is going to be true. And then secondly, we're going to make a for each statement. Actually, no, we're not going to make a for each statement. That's that's kind of bad. We would usually almost always want to make a regular for statement instead. So let's see here. The collider 2D, let's make an array. An array is a list of things. Equals physics 2D overlap, cir overlap circle all. Trans transform dot position explosion radius. Alright, so this is a lot to take in. This is going to make an array of, of 2D colliders, and it's going to be called colliders. It's going to be, it's going to consist of things within a circle, and this circle is going to be at the bomb's current position, and the radius of the circle is going to be the same radius as our circle collider 2D on the bomb. And now we want to make a for statement. For int i equals to zero, i less than colliders dot length i plus plus. So this is a for statement. It's going to be so i is going to start at zero as long as i is less than the length of our list, our colliders list. I is going to increase by one. So it's going to iterate this over and over until it's gone through every single. Uh, elements in the array. Now, rigid body 2D, we're just going to call this rigid equals to colliders i, so it's going to grab the elements in array. Uh, get component rigid body 2D. So the reason we're doing this is because we want to be able to access uh, the, the object that is being affected by the explosion, and we want to access their rigid body 2D so that we can add some torque to it, some spin. So add torque, add torque amount in degrees, times math f dot degrees to radians, uh, let's see, times the rigid body's inertia. So this is just some physics stuff, but basically this is going to be an amount in the, a torque amount that we are going to put in the inspector, so that's why we don't have anything assigned to it yet. And it's, we're going to multiply it by, uh, we're going to do some math to it that's going to turn it into radians, since that's what this wants to take in. We're going to multiply it by the inertia. A small amount of inertia means that it is, I think it's normal, a small amount of inertia means it's harder to push, but that may not be correct. Uh, this is not a physics lesson, so that's not too important. And let's see here. So after we've done that, we want to destroy our object after a short while. So let's make a new method. Let's see here. Void destroy bomb object, which is just going to destroy this object. So invoke destroy um, object and actually sorry this needs to be a string so let's see here destroy bomb object uh, let's see here destroy it after 0.1 seconds there you go so this is how you, you call a method you can call a method by just typing invoke typing its name into a string literal and then uh, putting some amount of time to invoke it afterwards so it's going to call this function after 0 0.1 sec second. And I put the f here because it needs to be, it just needs to be that way uh, to cast into a float. So let's see here. We've done pretty much everything we need to do. Yeah, so when our bomb hits something, check if it's a boulder. If it is a boulder, Enable our explosion component, and then get a list of everything in the explosion, and then for every single thing in the explosion, add some amount of torque to it. 
and then destroy a bomb. Perfect. Let's see here. We need to put our circle collider into our inspector, so don't forget to do that. I'm going to literally just drag it like that. There you go. So this should be everything that we need to do. Let's see if this works. Perfect. So you'll see that, okay, I need to really decrease the size of our jump. Let's decrease this to 20. So when we hit our bomb, you'll notice that, our, that the box is just still flying. So that is perfect. And now, you know, let's say we want something like another landing, maybe. So let's end this here. I'm going to control D to duplicate it. Uh, let's see here, rotate. And then do that. And then let's see, select that, control D, just like that. And now, I should really turn this into a prefab. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, so just drag this in. And now we have a bomb prefab. So now, if we want to expand our map, it's extremely easy. We have all the prefabs. We have our ground, we have our bomb, we have our crates. You know, let's make a little fortress. In Unity, they, ha they have these things called joints. And I don't really like using them because they're very glitchy and hard to use, but they're effective in a pinch. So let's say you want to connect all of these boxes together. I would use something like a distance joint, and a distance joint basically keeps two objects at the same distance. While still letting them sort of swing around on a hinge like that. But it's, it's just, it's very messy, so I don't like using it all that much. So we've made a little fort with our bomb. Let's try this out. Zoom down over here. Crash through these crates. Jump. And then roll down the hill. Boom. We've absolutely demolished that fort. And let's fall off the map as usual. So we've just made a bomb that we can run into. So that's an interactable. And now we can really expand in our game. We can make bigger bombs. All we have to do is, you know, drag this out. You can take this force magnitude, increase it to, I don't know, 10,000 instead. If you, were, if you really want to do that. But let's see here. You know, this could be fun. Or this could be really devastating. Really hope it doesn't crash the game. Boom. Wow. Really push this all the way back up the hill. Yeah. So, now that we have the basis of our bomb, we can create even more interactables that do different things and affect the player and the environment in different ways. So, this is really the great thing about game development, which is that once you have everything in place, the rest of the process is just having fun and designing something interesting for you and others to play. So, that's about it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching.